In uncompetitive inhibition, the inhibitor only binds to the enzyme substrate complex and not to the free enzyme or the free substrate. This means that uncompetitive inhibitors only affect enzymes that have already bound to their substrate. The binding of the inhibitor to the enzyme substrate complex causes a conformational change in the enzyme, which prevents the enzyme from completing its reaction. This type of inhibition is often reversible, meaning that the inhibitor can dissociate from the enzyme substrate complex and allow the enzyme to continue its reaction. Let us look at how we can express uncompetitive inhibition using Michaelis Menten pot, where the y axis is the rate of the reaction and the x axis is the substrate concentration. So here you see a normal reaction between an enzyme and a substrate in the Michaelis Menten pot. As the concentration of the substrate increases, so does the rate of the reaction. However, if we add an uncompetitive inhibitor, the Michaelis Menten pot starts looking like this instead. As you can see, both the value for Vmax as well as Km decreases. A lower Vmax indicates a lower overall rate of reaction, which makes perfect sense considering that the inhibitor prevents the enzyme from producing products. However, a lower Km value usually indicates a higher efficiency of the enzyme, similar to how a car that consumes less fuel is more efficient. But how can that be in this case? Well, because once the uncompetitive inhibitor has bound to the enzyme substrate complex, the substrate remains associated with the enzyme or locked. This causes the apparent affinity of the enzyme for the substrate to increase, meaning that the Km value decreases. So in this case, it is almost like saying that a car that is not moving consumes less fuel. In other words, the lower Km value actually indicates how much of the time the enzyme spends alone versus in its enzyme substrate complex. Let us take a quick look at the line weaver Berg plot for uncompetitive inhibition, where the y-axis is 1 over the rate of the reaction and the x-axis is 1 over the substrate concentration. We also know that the y-intercept displays 1 over the theoretical maximum of the reaction and the x-intercept displays negative 1 over the Michaelis constant. Since we know that both the Vmax and the Michaelis constant decreases but is inversed in the line viva Berg plot, we simply move the line up while it still remains parallel with the original line to get the new line viva Berg plot in the case of uncompetitive inhibition. If you want to know more about non-competitive inhibition, check out this video. Until next time.